going out to a house? No, ESP. Yeah. You're recording. What is it? What? You say something? No. Okay. What's your name? Here we go. Adequate notice for the city's meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Public Meeting Act pursuant to Public Law 1975. Said notice was advertised in the beacon and was posted in the bulletin board showing in time one place. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Paul, you guys want to come up? I'm going to read this uh, little proclamation here naming September as Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, Whereas every September, America renews its commitment to curing childhood cancer and extends its support to young people who deserve the chance to dream, discover, and realize their full potential. Whereas cancer is the number one killer of children under 14. It kills more kids than AIDS, asthma, juvenile diabetes, congenital anomalies, and cystic fibrosis combined. And whereas since its inception in 2015, Todd Schultz, the 18-year-old founder of Leukemia Fighter, has made, its, made his, his mission to raise awareness to the statistics of pediatric cancer by creating an organization, Paint the Town Gold, a, a St. Baldrick's nonprofit partner. And whereas cancer diagnosis of children turns the lives of the entire family upside down and, and the noble objective of childhood cancer awareness is put to the spotlight the types of cancer that largely affect children, survivorship issues, and importantly, to help raise funds for research and family support. Whereas the Township of Lacey desires to recognize the month of September 2019 as Paint the Town Gold to honor all children who are going through treatment and those like Owen who have become angels. Whereas the Township of Lacey would like to spread awareness to the distribution of brochures wearing gold decorations and other activities. Be hereby resolved that by mayor and township committee that proclaims the month of September as Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month, Paint the Town Gold, and honors and endorses all programs which encourage the importance of raising awareness of childhood cancer and also to encourage programs to raise research funding for childhood cancer. Now there be for it be resolved that I, Timothy McDonald, Mayor of the Township of Lacey, encourage all Lacey residents, private businesses, nonprofit organizations, and all other interested groups to join in reaffirming the commitment to the, to, to the fight of childhood cancer. So I'm going to give you this. On the behalf of uh, myself, my wife, our entire family, and uh, all the families affected by childhood cancer, we just want to thank the mayor, the committee men, Township of Lacey, and everyone who made this possible. And we look forward to everyone uh, helping raise awareness for childhood cancer. So thank you for your time and consideration. Whatever so we can do to help. So it's during the month of September, you're going to see some gold ribbons throughout the community um, in our parks. Um, so uh, you'll ask permission from the schools to do the same around the school's property and stuff like that. And this is um, in honor of Owen and to live like Owen did. Yes. And we do still see a few of those signs throughout our yes. community. Yes. Yep. That's amazing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Number two, public hearing on Fork River Wine and Spirits License Renewal. Robin, do you want to open up for this? Would you like me to open? Okay. Yeah. Um, we were actually in court on a similar challenge to the license that was granted to Forked River Wine and Spirits uh, in, over the winter, um, and I believe that we're going to be hearing some of the issues that were raised in that court case here. That court case dealt with the zoning aspect as well as um, issues concerning the use of the license. And um, in that case, which was before Judge Ford, she found that the license was being used properly and in accordance with the statutes of the state of New Jersey. I don't know if there's going to be anything else that's raised for you tonight, but I, you know, I'll address them in turn when that's over. 
State your name for the record. For the record, Samuel Real, Jr., of the law firm of Helmer, Connolly, and Kassman, on behalf of uh, the objecting licensee as it relates to the renewal of Orchid's Orchid River's license. Uh, I, I disagree with counsel to the extent, as she says, as to what Judge Ford decided. Judge Ford decided that as it related to the action of his file, which was a prerogative writ action, which was intended to ask the court to issue an order to direct you to do an investigation, regardless of what the outcome of that investigation would be. Judge Ford, in her decision, only touched upon the construction and zoning issues. She, in fact, did not write anything in her opinion as it related to the liquor license and whether, in fact, it was being used appropriately. Uh, the honest, uh, direct answer is that while she dismissed the action, uh, the opinion, in fact, never touched upon your authority as it relates to the exercise of your position as the local issuing authority under Title 33. The objection that has been filed to the renewal, and I don't know whether the licensee is present this evening, and the licensee uh, has a responsibility to satisfy you under Title 33 and the regulations, that it is using its privileges appropriately. The objector has an obligation to tell you what the issues are. But in the end analysis, without the licensee present, you are sort of being uh, asked to tie one hand behind your back as you move forward. The issues here are not complex. Uh, and in fact, we have an expert that we can provide you as it relates to the current operation of that license, Mr. John Coughlin. Mr. Coughlin used to be, before he retired and, and, and found his way into the private sector, was the chief state investigator at the Division of Alcohol and Beverage Control. Uh, the second witness that we would have for you, if, if you want to call, would be William Skull. Mr. Skull was a retired trooper, member of the state police, uh, who participated in essentially a visit as a patron to the license and had some conversations with staff. Let me see if I can summarize to you what the objections are to try to sort through it, because I don't want to take more of your time than necessary, because I understand how valuable it is. You start from the premise that under your local zoning, and that's the other thing, is that in the context of being a local issuing authority for Title 33 purposes, you are still, in fact, members of your township governing body, which means that you cannot take action under Title 33 that would violate any of your other ordinances, including your zoning ordinances. This particular property, as I'm sure you're aware, is located in a zone that provides for retail uses. It also provides for restaurants it does not provide for a bar. That's the one, the one hand. There have been no applications that anyone's aware of that have been made to your zoning board of adjustment for a use variance to operate a bar. And it's an important component to keep in mind as you move forward on this objection because your ordinance requires a restaurant. A restaurant under both common definition, if you open the dictionary, or more importantly, under statute under Title 33 requires an operating kitchen. That's the short Reader's Digest version. There is no kitchen on the premises of this particular licensee. The second part of it is that at the time the application was originally presented to you, and if I may, I think you need to be able to take a look at it without having it. If I may, can I push? Sure. Okay. Mayor, I have a notebook for you and for counsel. And I also have and forget everybody else. And we did assemble, if I may, packets of material that if we walk through it, I think you can understand what the objection is. Thank you. And why, from our perspective, <coughs> that's the ability of this <coughs> to operate under this under this privilege. Okay. Yeah. If you take a look at what is, is marked as Exhibit 1A, or in the packet, you'll see the application was filed for the transfer. That application is dated on February 22nd of 2018. If you take and turn to page four of that particular license, there are two questions that appear there, 4.4 and 4.5. 4.4 asks 
the licensee or the applicant, what are you doing with the license? That's the, the easiest way to think about it. And in this particular case, this applicant clearly disclosed that it was not going to run a restaurant at the location. That in fact it was running a retail license operation for the sale of beverages for all premises consumption and was going to provide a bar. As you know from your zoning responsibilities as an appellate authority on the zoning laws, that in fact bars are not permitted use. So right from the, the inception of this particular application, as the applicant itself disclosed to you, and this all this material came courtesy of the uh, clerk administrator being kind enough to, to respond to an OPER request. This particular licensee did not indicate that it was going to operate a restaurant, did not indicate that anybody else was going to operate a restaurant, and in fact indicated that basically its operation was going to be that of a liquor store. And the reason I say that is that when you take a look at question 9.3, which is, the statute may be a dinosaur, but sometimes it comes in handy. But under the application, if you turn to page nine, question 9.3, ask the applicant to disclose, and it has an affirmative obligation to disclose, if it has a relationship with any other individual or entity that's going to earn money as a result of the operation. It's not really an undisclosed interest in the context that you're thinking of, but it's simply, it's, is anybody else getting money from this? And as you'll see, in fact, that is, in fact, the case. So if you take a look at Exhibit B, and this is where you start to get down to the nitty gritty. Exhibit B was the diagram that was provided by the applicant at the time the application was submitted. Very, very small setup, cooler in the middle of the floor, which by the way is a violation of the race. But a very, very small, situation. However, if you turn and look at exhibit G, you see the plan that was actually submitted to your construction official. And that particular plan gives you the dead giveaway that in fact this license, which provides for retail consumption on premises and an accessory use, if you want to think of it in the context of land use, accessory use of being able to sell to patrons to take off a sit back or a bottle of wine or some other liquor <coughs> in fact you get the drawing that was submitted to your construction official and if you note at the back of the drawing it may be a little small on, on yours but if you look right in front of the walk-in box which is 10 by 69 feet long you see a description put in by the engineer on a drawing that was originally prepared at the same time the application was being submitted and prior to your action. But this drawing was never presented to you. It was only presented to your construction official. No, we have this. So what happens is, is that when you look at that notation, it says clearly a small accessory area. This is a licensee application that was originally from the beginning, I suggest to you. It was intended to look like a duck, walk like a duck, quack like a duck, not be the duck. It was intended to be a retail operation. So when you come back then to the rest of the exhibits, what you see is a situation where now this licensee has a privilege, but there are certain parameters to that particular privilege that are really important. One, you can only sell alcohol beverages for off-premises consumption from a 33, which is this license, a plenary retail consumption license, from your principal bar. You're not allowed to have gondolas in the middle of the floor. All your beverages that you're selling have to be essentially on exterior shelving. You also have to have, since there's been no use application approved or granted, and we all know under the enhanced proofs how difficult it is to get a use variance, there's been no variance for either a tavern or, in fact, a bar. What you do have is you have a relationship now. Remember the application where they didn't disclose anybody else? You have an application now where if you walk into that particular store and you walk to the back onto the different flooring that demarks the area that's supposedly the bar, 
If you want to order food, it comes from the local pizzeria. If you pay for your food, you pay for your food to the people working in the store. It gets delivered to you no different than Domino's or Pizza Hut or anybody else delivers food as takeout. And there's no functioning kitchen. I pay the clerk or the, or the, the bartender who's there. And as Mr. Skull can testify, he had a description, a discussion with the bartender as how that all is handled and who would give himself what. Beyond that, you have the situation where clearly in the context of this particular operation, you have your zoning application, which is also an exhibit. And I believe it's exhibit, let me just say D, but don't only do it. It is. Exhibit D, which is the zoning application. Now, curiously, as we all know, zoning is zoning, construction is construction, and liquor licensing is over here. And you wouldn't necessarily inspect your zoning officer. You have familiarity with legacy licensing law, but if you look at the exhibit, the exhibit itself makes clear that the intent of this particular applicant and now licensee was to operate a retail space for the sale of alcoholic beverages, and that's why your zoning officer could approve and issue a zoning permit because this was dressed up as a retail operation. If you would indulge me, because when you look at the permit, which is the next exhibit, it says in fact retail sales. It doesn't say anything at all about operating a bar or a restaurant, which would be consistent with the privilege that's provided under the statute. And I don't ask you to take my word for it. I'd ask your indulgence that I could ask uh, Mr. Coffin to come up if you want to swear in the council. I do want to make one point about the zoning permit, and this came up in the litigation. That zoning permit was subsequently amended during the course of the litigation for a retail and restaurant use, and it was granted. So, okay. so a lot of this is, is based on the fact that you're saying that the zoning permit was did not include a restaurant, but that permit was amended. Here's my problem with that. This is not a restaurant. It if is. you open the Oxford English Dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary will say, restaurant is a place where you can come and you can buy food that's prepared on the premises. More importantly, if you get the dictionary, go to the statute itself, Title 33. It's not regulatory. Thirty-three colon one dash one under the statute under definitions restaurant, an establishment regularly and principally used for the purpose of providing meals to the public, having an adequate kitchen and dining room, equipped with a preparing, cooking, and a serving of food for its customers, and in which no other business except such as is incidental to such establishment is conducted. This property, regardless of what the zoning application may have been amended to not comply with Title 33. Uh, and if I can make another point, and we also discussed this in litigation, title, the township doesn't have a definition for restaurant code, um, but we um, we didn't adopt all the definitions in Title 33. There is a, a definition of restaurant in the Ocean County Health Code that just refers to a restaurant that serves food. There's no requirement for a kitchen or preparation of food to be on premises. I'm going to respond to that because I anticipate because we talked about this in January. Title 33 <laughs> is, in fact, the controlling legislation, not your county regulations of the house, not your, not your county resolutions, not even your municipal code. This defines what a restaurant must be to qualify as a restaurant. It does not. It is quite simple. I'm, I'm a little confused. Here. Go ahead. The judge ordered this, right? Judge ordered what, Mayor? To change the permits and stuff. So. No, Judge, no, no. Mayor, she didn't. Well, the judge ruled in the favor of the township that the challenge to the application based on this zoning argument was not appropriate and she dismissed the action. And this is not necessarily an argument that's simply based upon zoning. This is based upon Title 33. Well, we can't override what the judge did. So this has nothing to do with the judge, Mayor. The, the judge dismissed an action on a summary judgment motion. It reached the merits of the decision. 
she dismissed them on summary judgment motion. She said that the prerogative writ action was inappropriate, was the inappropriate methodology to bring this before the governing body. That's what she basically discerned. There was no discussion on the merits, no decision on the merits. Her opinion did not touch upon, if you look at her written decision, her written decision does not touch upon whether to what extent you have authority under Title 33. This, in fact, is in the statute. It has nothing to do with English dictionaries. It is, in fact, the statute that controls this particular license. And under the statute, you have a licensee that holds a plenary retail consumption license that is operating in a zone that provides for restaurants. It does not meet the title provisions for what is a restaurant. And it is operating not only in violation of your zoning law, but more importantly, it's operating in violation of Title 33. And it can't be a tavern because taverns are not allowed to sell food. So your dilemma is that while you could turn around and say, well, you know, Mr. Real, it is what it is. The problem is that you have a clear violation of the operating privileges and the way these licenses are operating, what they're permitted to do, specifically. The statute is 86 years old. It is a dinosaur. It should be confined to a museum or a car or a hotel. But it hasn't been changed and it's unlikely to be changed. But it set up certain classes of licenses in 1933 under which the state regulates the sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages. That purpose of the statute has never changed. The classes of licenses have not essentially changed. A plenary retail consumption license since at least 1947 has been able to sell to go, but under very, very clear restrictions. And this particular licensee has to operate within those restrictions. It is not. It is the governing body's responsibility under Title 33 to enforce the law, the statute, and the rights. Here it's statutory. And I suggest to you that notwithstanding an amendment of the zoning application, when the clear indication has been that it wants to operate a liquor store, the zoning application and the zoning determination does not necessarily change the fact that you have an entity operating in violation of state law. And as such, it's not entitled to operate. On the other hand, you don't want to have a license of viewers, because we all know that they're controlled by population. You don't want to have a license get lost to a municipality. So you don't want to be in a situation where you don't renew a license, because then your license may be out of inventory, because if I do a rough count, you have more licenses than your population. You don't want to lose a restaurant license. No municipality does. But notwithstanding that fact, even if you renew that license so you don't lose it, you have a responsibility and the authority, more importantly, to administratively determine that, in fact, it's operating in violation of its privilege, it's operating in violation of the statute, and that that license should be suspended until they come into compliance. And that's the simple fact. I would like to ask that Mr. Cochran get an opportunity to speak to you. He won't take long, but I think he can probably better explain it to me, because he sat in the chair. Thank you, Mayor. Do you want to swear? We're on page four. Do you want to swear? I had to do that before. Will you just raise your right hand, and do you have something that you're swearing on? I have a Bible. I have administrative rights. There you go. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Cochran, just so the government body knows who you are, what do you want? Can you explain your prior experience as a state agency regulation enforcer? Yes. 
I was employed as a detective for the Division of uh, Department of Law and Public Safety for a total of 34 years, 22 years of which was with the Division of Criminal Justice, where I ended up being the chief of detectives. From there, I moved to the Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control, where for 12 years I was the chief state investigator of the investigative division of the Division of Alcoholic Beverage Control. <clears throat> During those 12 years, I either participated or supervised in some 17,000 cases involving administrative violations of the ABC Act, uh, both Title 33 and the administrative regulations, NJAC 13 colon 2 uh, at Al. I retired in 2014 uh, and live in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mr. Conklin, yeah. have you had an opportunity to review the exhibits that we previously provided to the government? Body? I have. And have you also had an opportunity to actually visit Fort Hibbert or Lawrence Ridge? I did. And as a result of that, are you in a position to relate to the governing body um, as it relates to the operation and its compliance with applicable regulations? Yeah, I see, I see several issues. First, there's, <clears throat> if you are 30, 33 license, a consumption license, which is what they have, <clears throat> that means your principal business is to serve alcohol for consumption on the license premise. You're either a bar, tavern, restaurant, nightclub, <clears throat> some business where your principal source of income in the sales, service, and delivery of alcohol is the yes, consumption yes. of alcohol on the license premise. Um, the, the way the store is currently configured, um, more than half the store is a liquor store. In fact, when you walk in through the front door, the entire front of the store is shelving on both perim perimeter walls. There's gondolas of alcohol that go down through the center. Uh, all of which are prohibited under administrative statutes. There is also shelving across the front of the uh, store. Now, the way a store is designed, it has floor to ceiling windows uh, in the design um, under um, ABC administrative regulations and also a Supreme Court case. Um, shelving in front of those windows is also a broad package violation. So, a broad package violation <coughs> would normally subject um, on first, on first um, blush, a uh, presumption of a 10-day suspension. But the real issue is compliance, because that's the whole purpose of the ABC Act, is to ultimately uh, not revoke licenses, but to bring the licenses into compliance. So how can we bring these licenses into compliance? Well, if it continues to be configured the way it is, it will always be in uh, non-compliance. And ultimately, you would reach a point where you'd have to revoke the license. So, <clears throat> if if it is a if it if it wants to be a liquor store, um, they need to get a 44 license the way they're currently con uh, currently configured or a distribution license. If they want to be a tavern, so if they want to be a 32, um, they can be a tavern. But um, according to Mr. Riel. That is a violation of your zoning ordinance. So therefore, that leaves them with the problem then that they want to be a restaurant. So they have created an entity inside the liquor store called uh, the Thirsty Piney Bar and Grill. And there's a sign inside at the bar that says that's what they are. Well, on the license, there is no trade name listed for Thirsty Piney Bar and Grill. We don't know who owns it, who runs it, how the profits are being distributed, which is a violation of the uh, ABC Act, and you have an incomplete license because you can't make decisions as the governing body without inc with, that, with incomplete information. If they want to be a restaurant, they have to comply with the statute, Title 33, that defines what a restaurant is. And as Mr. Real has just read you what that definition is, and there's no way this complies because they don't even have a kitchen. And the wait staff will tell you, hey, the food is coming from the pizza place four doors down. And they literally bring the food down the sidewalk in tins and deliver it to the bar where they serve it, uh, un, 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 uh, take off the uh, aluminum foil and uh, give you plastic spoons and forks and you eat the food from the pizza place. 
that's not the definition of a restaurant. <clears throat> and so that what they are trying to do is an attempt to comply with Title 33, and they're not. So if, they're, if they want to be a restaurant, then they have to go back before this board, and they have to get permission to build a kitchen and reconfigure their current uh, establishment. If they want to be a tavern, then they have to come back before the board and get zoning clearance to become a tavern, meaning that taverns, there is a strict definition of what a tavern is under Title 33. And, under, and if you're a bar, tavern, where your primary purpose is to only sell uh, alcohol, you can only sell uh, supplementary food items, and it's specific in the, uh, in the statute, beer nuts, peanuts, uh, pretzels, uh, potato chips. Those are the types of things that you can sell as a tavern. They're not doing this. Um, if you want to be a liquor store, uh, then the bar has to go, and they have to somehow acquire a distribution license. But as they're configured now, they're in violation of the statute, and they're in violation of the administrative regs to find broad package violations. Just Cardinal, let me ask you a question. Just when you walk in, you're walking into a restaurant, a bar, or a liquor store. What's the other problem? Under the statute, you're supposed to be able to walk into the primary bar room. When you walk into this store, you walk into a liquor store. You do not see the bar. The bar is in the back. It's actually, they've constructed a, a uh, partial wall by putting an ice machine in the place. They actually have different flooring from the, the liquor store. is one type of flooring um, that, that leads you, the flooring actually leads you around in a circle of the red, red paint somehow on, in the floor in the country. To show that and then you there is a clear demarcation and you enter into the bar area which has different flooring and the bar begins so that's the principal bar room, that back room not the front where the liquor store is and that's where the violation occurs the the in, the entire purpose of conveying to a consumption licensee the the ability to sell packaged goods was an auxiliary use for the primary purpose for the convenience of its patrons. Someone goes to a bar at night, they have a few drinks, they have dinner, they want to take a six pack or they want to take a bottle of wine home, they're allowed to do that. It's an auxiliary function. It's not your primary function. This is, a, this is um, if you visit this place, their primary function, uh, we don't have the ability to take, you know, I did not have the ability to take testimony from the owner, but I do not know what the percentages of uh, sales are, but from the very looks of the business, primary purpose here is the sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption off the license premise. What, in the context of the operation as it exists, as it relates to being in compliance or possibly in compliance with regulations? Are there any of the forward shelving that is on the exterior walls? Leave aside the gondolas for a second, which are clear to me. But as it relates to the exterior wall shelving on either side of the, of the store, up through and under the, the windows, is it your opinion, given your prior experience and your history, that all that actually is not in the principal bar room, given the way the room, the, the store is laid out? Right, the way it's configured, they have they have created a demarcation mm -hmm. of what is the yes. principal bar room, which is in the back of the store. The front of the store is nothing but shelving along the wall. It's a separate area for the sale of uh, of alcohol for a consumption off the license premise. The shelving on the on the perimeter walls appears to be uh, no no more than two <coughs> feet in di uh, in depth, which is in compliance with the statute. The, the shelving in the front is, is a violation because the windows of the construction of the building go the whole way to the ground. And under the ABC regulations, you're not to have any shelving in front of windows. That's prohibited. Mr. Kaufman, if, if a representative of the licensee was here this evening, would the questions you want to pose to that individual not only include percentage of income earned the sale of, of what's going out the front door, but also how much alcoholic beverages they have purchased 
and have put through the story in their inventory? That would all be part of the, the inquiry because you, you're looking at, again, what is the primary purpose of this license? And the primary purpose of this license is the sale of alcohol on the license premise. It's a completely different business model from one of a retail liquor store. And, and am, I, am I correct in understanding, because while I'm not, I'm not quite as old as the statute, but am I, am I correct in understanding that the statute itself in creating the classes was intended to create a balanced regulatory approach so as competition could be maintained and each class of licensee would be in the ability to operate within the scope of their license privilege? Yes. The, the issue with alcohol, the alcoholic beverage regulation, is that once you is under, you know, this goes back to the 21st Amendment of the Constitution at the end of Prohibition, we allowed alcohol to once again be, be served and each state was, uh, uh, was required to establish a regulatory scheme and up, and up to and including temperance. So they could be dry if they so desired. New Jersey created a, a regulatory scheme in which uh, there are various classes of licenses uh, and, and everything from manufacturing to distribution to retail. And the retail licenses are then divided up uh, from uh, seasonal licenses, although there are not many left, but the idea of shore bars with seasonal licenses uh, to, um, to consumption licenses to distribution licenses. Shortly after World War II, about the same time we re redid our Constitution in 1947, um, the legislature um, imposed uh, population caps, and that unfortunately has never been a readdressed or you know I'm not here to debate the wisdom of all that but it is what it is and so that there are the idea is that there's more consumption licenses ability to have more restaurants per, per population one per 3,000 population as opposed to distribution licenses which are uh, one per 7,500 population and the idea is that the, the business models of each business are different one operates a restaurant operates on on a relatively low volume of alcohol, higher profit. The, 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 the business model of a liquor store is that of a grocery store. Big volume, smaller margins. And so the, the legislature enacted these uh, population caps in order to uh, allow fair competition in the industry. And when you have a person of one license impinging upon the rights of other licenses, you have unfair competition, and that's why the broad package regulations were established uh, originally. Thank you. Mayor, members of the committee, any questions for Coppin? Anybody? Everything you've never wanted to know about. Mayor, member of the committee, I don't, you know, obviously I, I don't represent it. I don't know why they're not here. And they have an obligation to be here. They're here. They are here. Yes, they are. Oh, so they're here? Okay. Um, the bottom line is, is that clearly you have an operation that's a violation of the rights and the statute. Well, I don't suggest you don't renew. But you cannot renew and allow them to continue in violation of the rights and the statute. And you should do one of two things, I suggest. One is to issue them formal charges under the regulations so they can come in and have a hearing, due process, at which time you can take action if you so determine after you hear the facts. Or on the renewal is a special condition. You have the authority under the statute as a special condition to turn around and renew on the condition that they come into compliance and that until they come into compliance, they are suspended from the sale of alcohol beverages. That is the authority that you have under Title 33. You have concurrent jurisdiction with the Director of the Division of Criminal Justice. And since this is a licensed or a Division of Alcohol Beverage, I'm oh, sorry, I'm referring to the John Elijah's work. But you have the authority as a local issuing authority. It is your license that you issue. It is the license that you've granted the privilege to the Great Operation. Right now, you have a licensee that's violating the authority you granted them under the privilege. And quite frankly, if you look at your resolution, 
resolution you adopted on approving the transfer and citing the license. Specifically on paragraph two says you shall comply with all the statutes, rules, and regulations of the state as it relates to the alcohol beverage industry. This license, even, unfortunately, is not. It's not to say it can't come into compliance. Whoever wants to spend the money to do so is, is a business decision to make. But that is the issue before you this evening. Again, it's not only about whether you renew or not. It's the fact that, quite frankly, you don't want to lose the license you renew it. Any number of municipalities are crying for additional licenses. Nobody ever wants to lose one, trust me. But notwithstanding that, you, I suggest, cannot allow an entity to operate a privilege in violation of that privilege. And that's the, essence, the essentials of the objection. It is your decision. It is, as the courts and the statutes say in the administrative setting, left to the exercise of your sound discretion and judgment. If you sit on the land use board or zoning board, you've heard that before from your solicitors. The same rules apply here. And I thank you for your time and prayers. Thank you. I'm going to ask our attorney to. Mr. Stockton. Before that, I'm going to call. I'm going to ask our attorney to go over Judge Ford's decision and give us the, what Judge Ford did. I do have an excerpt from her opinion where we discussed Title 33. The statute itself states that the holder of a plenary retail consumption license can sell alcoholic beverages for consumption on the licensed premises by the glass or other open receptacle and also to sell any alcoholic beverages in the original containers for consumption off the premises. It doesn't talk about business models or what the intent was. I mean, that's something that you would go into if you were going to be questioning the statute. It doesn't talk about that. It just gives us general permission. The ABC handbook says that the sale of packaged goods can only take place in a public bar room and that the packaged goods may only be displayed for sale on the perimeter walls unless the floor plan was approved by the ABC in the 1970s. Judge Ford acknowledged that, saying that NJSA 33-1-12 permits sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption on premises and allows the sale of alcoholic beverages in original containers for consumption off premises. The use by Forked River Wines and Spirits is consistent with this statute. The retail sale of liquor is limited to the stock on the perimeter walls and in the cooler. It is within the exercise of the administrative discretion by the township officials to determine compliance with the zoning code. And she dismissed it. And as I said earlier, she addressed the zoning issues. Let us hear from our attorney. I accept that. And the zoning issue about the restaurant and the tavern is something that was raised here again today. And the township has issued a zoning permit and considers the use. I mean, there's no bars anywhere allowed within the township. But if you have a restaurant and you have a liquor license, you can operate and you can sell liquor. And this establishment, the township has determined to be a restaurant. It serves food and it serves alcohol with the food. There's no requirement in the township ordinances that requires the food to be cooked on premises. And there's no prohibition from bringing food from another establishment and walking it down the sidewalk covered in tin foil. It's just not a requirement in this town. And the zoning code does not adopt Title 33's definitions. Title 33 definition of restaurant applies to restaurant in the terms of an ABC license. But the township zoning code is separate and it does not use that definition. I assume then that the township's position is that its zoning ordinance trumps the statute under Title 33? When it comes to zoning, I mean, the township... Leave aside the zoning, counsel. Leave aside the zoning. Leave aside the zoning issue and confront the usage of the privilege of the license. Essentially what you're saying is, well, if it meets our zoning code because our zoning official said, yeah, okay, fine. And we haven't adopted a restaurant definition. Even though your Title 33 provides you one, you don't have to adopt that and that's fine. But you still have a regulated license in a regulated industry. And that regulated license has to comply with those statutes. And the statute says a restaurant, notwithstanding what your local ordinance may say, has to have a functioning kitchen. This does not. To basically try to say that, well, you know, we don't have to deal with this because it's okay with our zoning officer, is essentially not acting in accordance with the authority directly granted to you under Title 33. You know, I accept the fact. For the purpose of this presentation, I'll accept the fact that your zoning officer said it's okay. I'm not here appealing the zoning officer's decision. 
However, in the entire scheme of things, given the facts that this were presented and the facts as they've developed as it relates to the usage and the development of the property, it's all part of the program. It's all part of the factual pattern. Well, leave aside the zoning. The zoning is essentially, I guess, immaterial. But you still have the ultimate problem that you have under your authority, clear authority, that you have to act. And you have a clear statutory definition under that authority that says what a restaurant is. And this is not. And as a matter of purpose, if it doesn't meet Title 33's definition of restaurant, it doesn't matter whether your zoning suggests it is or isn't. You can't allow them to operate. Because this is not a retail store. And whether they've amended the permit or not, it has been their intent to operate a retail store as an evidence by everything that you were presented as it relates to the liquor application. Because they said that on page four of the initial application. Ignore that. For the far purposes, we don't have to worry about zoning. I guess it's subtext. But the reality is, is under Title 33, there isn't any question. It's not a duck. But title 33 does not require that a plenary retail consumption license be in a restaurant. So, all right. I mean, okay. Mr. Smith, if the board you acts, the board acts. You uh, have clear authority uh, in the statute. I'm going to ask Thank you, Mr. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, you need to come up here. I'm going to have it. Do you want to comment on this? Yes, I have comment. Okay. Just have him state his name for the record. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll go back in the thing. State your name for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Terry Smith, and I am uh, one of the principals of Fork of River Wines and Spirits, and I spent 40 years in the industry. So, what you've heard tonight is partly true, Mrs. Real. That's not all true. D address, address the committee, please. It's not all true. Uh, but irre irrelevant of what I have to say or what he has to say or any of the witnesses, there's only one authority that we have to respect as far as the license, and that is the township and the ABC. Now, I don't know why, but the ABC came through the doors as soon as we opened several times and basically cataloged every inch of the building from pictures, measurements, footprints, everything. They left and they were fine. We have never been served with any violations, and I don't think we will because we're very stringent upon staying within the, fine, the confines of the, of the license. Mr. Real talked about a bar. There's two bars, Mr. There's a bar in the front, that is the growler station, and there's a bar in the back. The bar in the back is 2,444 square feet, and the room in the front with the growler station, which is a service bar, is 3,000 square feet. So really, the whole space is used as a bar. Now, yes, you're right. The walls have 134 feet of linear feet of shelving. They're 24 inch deep, and wherever they can be used, we use them as shelving. But if you think that, someone that's in business which rents 6,000 square feet and put nothing in the middle, it makes no sense. That's why we have two bars. So the premise is that we are hoping to reach a level of sales that will accomplish what we set out to do. But as far as compliance, this license, as far as the ABC, is 100%. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Let me open this up to the public. Does the on public have any comment on this? On this matter alone. She and I motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Then we're going to take a vote on it on the township meeting. Aye. Not on this meeting. Uh, then we're going to take a vote on the township. The resolution for consideration whether you um, approve or deny the renewal is on the township meeting this evening. That's, that's this one? No, no, that's the, the one below it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That'll be resolution 2019-230. Right, when we get to the township we portion of the meeting. Couch. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Let me see the next item on the uh, Number three. Request for, number three, request for special event and signage. This is Lytle Grand Opening, September 12th to the 15th. Lytle is opening on September 12th through the 15th, obviously, to put up the additional signage and to do their special activities for those couple of days. Um, they would like special permission to um, step outside their approval of their zoning for that, that time frame. Do we have a motion? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Fort River Presbyterian Church Fall Festival, September 14th, 2019. 
This is basically held mostly indoors, but again, this is outside the scope of their zoning permit, so they're looking for special permission to hold this fundraising event. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Fourth is request for consideration of limiting the use of plastic bags. Um, this has been brought to my attention a couple of times from different people throughout the town. I thought we'd throw it up here. See what you guys have to say, thoughts about it? I provided you with the copy of Stafford's ordinance. Um, we have gotten um, several requests, and I did attach the most recent request with regards to us limiting the use of plastic bags. I, I'm not looking for a decision this evening. You may want time to um, you know, absorb this ordinance, see what Stafford did. I don't know if any of you have shopped down in Stafford. Most of the time you have to bring your own bags. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's up to you guys what you want to do. Obviously, you know, plastic is uh, a big item in the environment lately. As you can see, they're switching from plastic straws to paper straws and trying to get rid of the plastic in the environment. I think we should just take it under advisement yeah. Yeah, for that's another the, time. Exactly what I'm asking. Like we um nope we just need a motion to uh, close this meeting. Move it. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Move it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and now we can go into the township portion of the meeting. Okay. Adequate notice to receive the meet for the CB's meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act pursuant to public laws of 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Beacon. And was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of Please rise for the salute for the flag and a moment of silence. <coughs> uh, no, I think if our chairs got stuck oh, together. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Still staying? <laughs> I can't believe they're doing break. He's not even in school, so he's not getting school credit for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. It will sign it. Like when you need that slip, just bring it in. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right. Uh, number one, second reading of ordinance 2019, National amending chapter 289 recycling so as to set the fees for the disposal of fires. In order to the Township Lacey County of Ocean Standards, is the amending and supplementing the Township Code of the Township Lacey so as to amend Chapter 289-7 entitled Recycling Drop-Off Center. Mm. Um, as you know, uh, we allow the disposal of up to five tires per, uh, resident, per uh, residential household. The county and the township now are being charged by the vendors that do dispose of them for us. So we are looking to recoup those costs at $2 per tire for the drop-off. Move mm -hmm. uh, it. Let's open the floor, second reading. Seeing that motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion on the ordinance. Move it. Second. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Second reading of ordinance 2019-12 amending chapter 178 fees so as to set fees for marriage ceremonies performed by the mayor and deputy. In order to the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, amending and supplementing the Township Code of the Township of Lacey so as to amend uh, Chapter 178 entitled Fees. This is for the fees for um, the performance of marriage ceremonies performed by the mayor, deputy mayor. Um, it, it, this will be residents of Lacey where the ceremony is uh, within the uh, boundaries of Lacey Township is $50, where the mayor has to travel outside of Lacey, $75. Non-residents um, within Lacey is $100. Non-residents outside of Lacey is $150. Second reading, open the floor. Any comments? Seeing none, motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion on the ordinance. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Cartolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Second reading of ordinance 2019-13, setting salaries for various positions. In order to the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, amending an ordinance entitled In order to the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, affixing and determining the salaries, wages, and compensations of the officers, employees, and members of the governing body of the Township. This is setting the tax assessor salary, the deputy tax assessor salary, part time public safety telecommunicators, and uh, part time public safety telecommunicators after the first year of employment. Motion to, uh, to, to second reading, open the floor. Sheen, no motion to close the floor. Second. Sure. All yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 Motion on the ordinance. Move, Move it. it. Second. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. 
Resolution 2019-223 authorizing to join the lawsuit with the Ocean County Board of Chosen Freeholders. Resolution of the Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the Township Attorney to join the lawsuit challenging the Attorney General's Immigration Trust Directive. Motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-224 appointing laborers for the Public Works Department. Resolution of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the employment of Thomas Boyd, Alexander Brower, Scott, is it Smed? How do you say your last name, Scott? Smedel? Uh, Smedley. Smedley and Michael Valeri as full-time laborers for the Department of Public Works. They are beginning on Monday. And two of the gentlemen are in the back there. Move it. Second. Give me a second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Congratulations, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Resolution 2019-225, appointing seasonal recreation staff. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the employment of seasonal employees for the Recreation Department. Move, move, move it. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-226, authorizing the shared services with Berkeley Township for municipal court call-out coverage. Resolution of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the execution of an interlocal services agreement with the Township of Berkeley for call-out coverage with the Lacey Township Municipal Court. This is on an as-needed basis. Um, we assist Berkeley. Berkeley assists us for call-out services when we're not available. Move it. Second. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution, two, uh, two, resolution 2019 227 authorizing the execution of the Huntington County Cooperative Purchasing System. Resolution of Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the Township of Lacey to enter into a cooperative purchase agreement with the lead agency, Huntington County Educational Services Commission, for the purchase of work materials and supplies presumed to NJSA 48-11-115. This is just another cooperative um, that we're able to purchase through. Um, we are looking to purchase our um, new recreation bus through this cooperative. Move motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Caratolo? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-228, renewing our membership in the Ocean County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, renewing membership in the Ocean County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. This is the insurance pool that we are in with um, many other municipalities throughout the state of New Jersey. This one will expire on December 31st of 2022. Motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Resolution 2019-229 authorizing the place-to-place -place transfer for retail consumption licenses for Route 9 restaurants. Resolution of the Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing and improving a place-to-place -place transfer of liquor license 1512-33017-003 for Route 9 restaurants known as Caffrey's Backyard. And this was because it was a pocket license, and now we have a location, and there's going to be hopefully opening in the very near future. We'll move it. Second. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Canis? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-230, renewing a culinary retail consumption license. This is the one we just had the public hearing yes. on. Yes. Resolution of Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, renewing plenary retail consumption license in the Township of Lacey. And this is for the Forked River Wine and Spirits, and this will be through June 30th of 2020. And you can make a motion to approve, or you, somebody can make a motion to deny. Move it. Do a second? I'll step down, I'll second it. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Okay, passes. All right. Resolution 2019-231 authorizing an amendment to enhance these pond dredging project. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the execution of an amendment to the contract with Albert Marine Construction for the Hansi's Pond Maintenance Dredging Project. As you know, we had entered into a contract with um, Albert Marine Construction for the Hansi's Pond. We went out and did an additional survey because you needed to have a survey that was less than six months old with regards to the sediment in the pond. Uh, unfortunately, it has uh, shoaled in additionally more, so there's another 1,130 cubic yards that need to be removed. We're close to almost 2,000 cubic yards that we're removing. 
the additional cost is $87,541. Yes, we did fund for it and I did plan for it at budget time. I, I, I got this covered and it should, the project will actually be done hopefully by the end of this week. Yay. Yeah. Take a motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Cortolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 19-232 authorizing a change fund in the Department of Public Works. Resolution of Township Lacey County v. New Jersey authorizing a change fund in the amount not to exceed $50 to provide change to individuals making payments to the Department of Public Works. Motion. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Cortolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-233 providing for an item of revenue in the municipal budget. Resolution of Township Lacey County versus State of Jersey providing for the insertion of a special item of revenue and appropriation in the 2019 municipal budget known as Chapter 159 of the Township of Lacey pursuant to NJSA 48-4-87. This is for the shared services with the borough of Tuckerton. This is in the amount of 17500 for the remainder of this year. Motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-234. Authorizing the release of a maintenance bond for the police department HVAC project. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of New Jersey authorizing the release of a maintenance bond and the performance bond issued by Performance Mechanical Incorporated for the HVAC rooftop, rooftop unit replacement phase two for the police department. This has met its retention period. Um, it has been maintained. It is uh, working well and we are authorizing it to be released, the bond. Motion. Move it. Mr. Kennis? Oh, second? Sorry. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-235 authorizing the release of a maintenance bond for road opening permit number 4189. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of New Jersey authorizing the release of a maintenance bond for the new issued for New Jersey Natural Gas Company for road opening permit 4189. This is for um, maintenance um, main renewals on East Lacey Road prior to our paving project. Motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-236 authorizing the refund of performance bond for road opening permit number 4830. Resolution Township Lacey County of State New Jersey authorizing the refund of performance bond and application fees for the road opening permit number 4830. This was for Devon Street um, and it was uh, the job was not performed. Move it. Second. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-237 authorizing the refund of the building department fee. Resolution attached to Lacey County Board of State of New Jersey authorizing a refund of a building department fee issued by the Lacey Township Building Department for 804 Sandpiper Drive and it's in the amount of $450. Um, the individual is no longer moving forward with the solar project. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-238 authorizing the cancellation of taxes due to a disabled veteran exemption. Resolution of Township Lacey County versus State of New Jersey authorizing the tax collector to cancel the 2019 taxes due on a property granted the 100% disabled veteran exemption and refund the resulting credit balance. This is on Block 1901.17, Lot 93. Block 477, lot 47, block 1631.02, lot 14, and block 1901.17, lot 76. Motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Dyko? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019 239 authorizing the cancellation of uncollectible taxes. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of New Jersey authorizing tax collectors to cancel uncollectible taxes and refund tax overpayments. This is on block 4032, lot 10, and block 630, lot 11.01. .01. This was a duplicate on the assessment rolls and needs to be deleted. Motion. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019 240 authorizing placing a lien on the property for property maintenance issues. For block 115, lot 14. A resolution attached to Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey accepting the certification of the Director of Public Works concerning costs incurred in the removal of debris and cleaning up of the property located at 114 Beach Boulevard and authorizing the placement of a lien against said property for said costs in the amount of $97.04. Motion. Move it. Second. Second. Mr. Kennis? <coughs> yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curatolo? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. 
resolution 2019-241 authorizing placing a lien on the property for property maintenance issues for block 256 lot 16. Resolution of Township Lacey County Voters State of New Jersey accepting the certification of the Director of Public Works oops, concerning costs incurred in the removal of debris and cleaning up of the property located at 403 Riverview Road and authorizing the placement of a lien against said property for said cost in the amount of $130.50. Motion. Move it. Second, please. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtola? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-242 authorizing the refund of deposits. Resolution attached at Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the refund of deposit held for the use of municipal facilities. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtola? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. Resolution 2019-243 authorizing the payment of township bills. Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the payment of township bills in the amount of $10,338,128.84. Oh. Now remember, we haven't met in five weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's the school taxes <laughs> and the county taxes. Motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes, with abstention U4498. Mayor McDonald. And U4499. Okay, sorry. Yes. Mayor McDonald. Yes, abstention. Extension. Yeah, on H2747. Monthly reports. Okay, for the month of July, for the month of June, municipal court collected receipts in the amount of $20,393.13. For the month of July, the municipal court collected receipts in the amount of $25,561.07. For the month of June, the Department of Community Development collected receipts in the amount of $89,780.80. For the month of July, Department of Community Development collected receipts in the amount of $46,070. Municipal Clerk's Office for the month of July collected receipts in the amount of $4,663.37. For the month of July, road opening permits were collected in the amount of $21,870.75. Recycling commodity in the amount of $725. Truck parking in the amount of $340. Motion to accept the reports is read. Approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to approve the township meeting minutes of July 11, 2019. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve caucus meeting minutes of July 11, 2019. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve a raffle license application for the Lacey Township High School Booster Association, the Women's Club of, of, of Barrage Barnegat, the Lacey Township PBA Local 238, and the Rotary Club of Fort Carter. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, now we just have committee comments. Comments from the committee. We'll start down here with our world traveler. Who's just that? back from Iceland. Iceland. I am. Who's that? I just back. Deputy Mayor Kenneth. Thank you, Mayor. On the topic of money, uh, <laughs> tax bills came out last night, or last night, last month. And I just want to recognize all levels of Ocean County government for the fiscal discipline to hold increases to a minimum this year. The county rate actually went down two tenths of a cent. And overall, the entire tax rate increased by 2.5 cents, and that might be the lowest increase since I've been sitting on the Township Committee. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say that as long as we're sitting here, we'll do our best to provide the level of service and the quality of life that Lacey, Lacey residents have come to expect at the least cost to our taxpayers. That's why I'm here. Thank you. Mr. Dykoff. Well, that was pretty good, Steve. <laughs> I echo those sentiments. Um, and the only other thing, believe it or not, summer's almost over. And um, school starting soon. Watch out for those kids. Uh, enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. Give me a tell us. Yes, I had a couple of prepared comments tonight. Normally, it'd just uh, be uh, from the heart, off the cuff. But I think there's a couple of things that merit mentioning. Uh, what's going on in our town, uh, in particular, and I think it's important. I think it's a lot to be proud of. Um, I'd like to call it essentially a renaissance of what, what's happening in our town, with particularly regard to um, businesses, not only uh, uh, small businesses, but homes, existing home sales, new home sales as well. Uh, just in the last several months, I compiled a short list. Um, we have RWJ Barnabas Physicians into the former Hart Building, Jersey Charm Coffee, Holt Tech came to town, Urban Shack Artisan Shop. Aldi forthcoming, Lytle forthcoming, September 12th, Cafferty's Tavern inside and out, very soon now, we're hopeful. Um, to dovetail with the business part of it, uh, we wanted to control what we could control. The estate card program, if you call 693-1100, or if you go on LaceyTownship.org, 
Uh, you can see a little bit over uh, 1,200 people have signed up for the estate card program already. Uh, it's money that comes right off of your property tax bill. Uh, it's very easy to read, and uh, there are numerous benefits uh, to the card itself. Uh, I think a mailer went out with our MUA, our latest quarterly MUA bill, and and the tax bill. So if you have a, a spare moment or if you have questions, please 693-1100. It is not like um, card programs in the past. This is good uh, at many merchants in our town as well as 3,200 online merchants. So these are purchases you'd make anyway. We wanted to control what we can control. We had a very uh, successful negotiation with that company. Uh, we have home selling in, in Seabreeze in our retirement uh, communities. We have the Harrington Group that our mayor is very instrumental in getting. This, is a, this town now has a PR firm. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, in 2017, 2018, we were a town of distinction uh, named by RWJ Barnabas for the work that really not that any of us did, but the work that our police department did. And curiously enough, and I'm glad that you're all here tonight in the audience, the Municipal Alliance has done and the schools have done to keep kids off drugs, underage drinking, alcohol, things like that. Um, so out of all the municipalities, we, we were recognized. I want some of these things spoken about. These are, these are real achievements in our town to control costs, to increase rateables, uh, to talk about achievements of our teachers, our, our people, our police, our alliance pe folks. Uh, these are things that are happening. As we try to delve and in beginning into tourism, the above ground, above water water park, referred to as the Wibbit. I think the mayor will have more comments on that as well. Uh, I believe we're over $50,000 now. Uh, increase of 1,700 beach passes this year over last. So there's a lot to be proud, there's always been a lot to be proud of in Lacey. Um, but I think when you talk about business now and you dovetail it with what's going on in the national scene, interest rates at historic lows, uh, employment, uh, unemployment at historic lows, and for groups, African American, female, Hispanic, um, I think it's a great time to be here. I'm, I'm as enthusiastic as I've ever been and as proud as I've ever been to live in Lacey. And I will tell you, our people make it great. I'd be remiss if I could have one more comment, Mayor. Uh, the mayor and I, uh, on August 3rd, we were at uh, a function on Route 9 at, at the Moose. Uh, we saw an active code. I spoke about this uh, 48 hours ago, Tuesday night, uh, where somebody was actively receiving CPR. Uh, within two minutes, and that's no exaggeration, the Lacey EMS was on scene. Uh, and that person now, as I understood from our mayor, uh, who jumped in uh, the other night when we, we were speaking and he helped me out, um, that person now is doing better and that that person's life was saved there were two ambulances and an SUV on site in virtually no time in real time before we put our bottles of water down the folks were there and there was a number of them there so I want to say thank you from the bottom of, of our heart God bless that, that uh, Lacey yeah, and all of our services police fire and EMS that will conclude my comments mayor thank you thank you Okay, um, I'm going to start this off. Uh, earlier this evening, we joined the Ocean County Board of Chosen Freeholders in a lawsuit against the Attorney General of the state of New Jersey. This has to deal with ICE. Uh, back in March, I wrote a letter to the Attorney General asking for some clarification because essentially what he has done with his order is put our police department in jeopardy of federal regulations. And I wanted clarifications <coughs> because he said you don't have to not to, not to put, uh, work with ICE, but the federal regulations say you gotta work with ICE. And this puts this town in jeopardy, puts the citizens in jeopardy. So, still haven't heard back from the AG, don't expect it. But this is a very, very important issue going forward as to whether we're going to follow the laws of this great country of ours or not. And I really don't care what your political side of the aisle is. If you don't like the law, change the law. It's as simple as that. 
That, that's how I feel about that. Now, getting on to Mr. Kennis's taxes and so forth like that. Some people say, what are we spending the money on? Well, let me tell you what we're spending the money on. Uh, if you've been at the end of Gilly Park, uh, the wooden guardrail is up. Now, that is to protect when we have festivals and stuff like that, so cars just don't come off of Western Boulevard and run into people and, and hurt them. Or, or the wooden guardrail will stop that. The Gilly Park new playground equipment is in, and that will start in October, right after Lacey's. Um, if you've been down to the Bayfront Park, that's we're putting that rubber eyes matting down for that. So that's got to get, get the ground prepared for that. And then in the springtime, we'll put everything together. So the Gilly Park Playground will be closing in October because we'll be taking it all down and probably will not reopen. And I guess, depending on the weather, sometime in late April or early May. So that would be my time frame for that. Don't hold me to that. Um, we're also putting a new playground in up at, uh, out at Bamber, at Bamber Park. This is what we're spending your tax dollars on. Um, the, we've got a, a grant for it, but the lower Boulevard paving, is that complete? No. It's not it's, completed it's yet, but it'll be on. complete in the next couple of weeks. The uh, Hansi's Pond dredging, we're, we're spending, we're spending your tax dollars to make this town better. We've bought up a lot of, uh, Equipment for public work. We have put public works, buying equipment off of public works for many, many years because we want to get them out. But uh, last year, committeeman uh, Juliana was back there and literally took a dump truck off the road and came in and said, we, we got to do something. So we, we, we're, buying, we're buying equipment for that. We're spending the money as wisely and as efficiently as possible. And some people have said, you know, the WIVIT. What is that doing? How about $56,000? And we're not even through the summer yet. We'll figure that's going to be about sixty-five thousand dollars. It's an increase of beach badges. People are talking about this all over the place. We probably got almost a million dollars in free publicity from newspapers, things like that. Uh, I was on all the Philadelphia channels about this. They were down. So this is <laughs> some good stuff for us. And. and if we continue at this pace, this, the whip will be paid off in, in two and a half years. Uh, uh, I just want to mention that Lacey Day is Saturday, September 28th. Come on out. It's going to be a great time. Also, on Thursday, August 29th in the middle school, uh, Congressman Kim is holding the town hall meeting here. So we invite everybody to come out there and, and question uh, Congressman uh, Kim. Also, Holtec. This is in September 22nd, I believe it is. 23rd. 23rd. They will also hold, a, hold uh, a, a town hall meeting at the middle school, and you can come out and question them all about what they're doing down at the power plant. Um, Veronica and I attended a meeting on the census, which was going to take place next year. This is extremely important, not only because it, the money that the county gets, they can spend down here in Lacey. So we're looking for some volunteers on that. You can actually get paid. I'll have that uh, address for you at the next meeting. But the census, 2020 census, is going to be critical for us. Um, what else do we have? And uh, we'll wrap this up with in 2021 will be Lacey Township's 150th anniversary. We're starting on that, and we'll, we'll be hearing more about the things that we uh, will be doing for Lacey's 150th <coughs> down the road. With that, I will open it up to the public. Does the public have any comment here on these? Come on down. Uh, I did forget to mention your run. I apologize. I'll let you, I'll let you talk. Yes, I guess you can figure that out. Uh, we're wearing our shirts. I have some, um, by the way, Heather Scanlon. I am the coordinator for the Lacey Municipal Alliance and I'm very proud of the things that we do in this town. I have some of our volunteers here this evening. Um, we do a lot of good things. But of course, we're coming up on our annual big event, our 5K race, which is Saturday, August 24th. And I hope that you will join us. If I you missed, don't- I've missed one yet. Well- I don't run, but- <laughs> You can walk. We have a five mile, the 5K race at, at 8.30. At eight o'clock, though, we have a one mile fun run. That's for everybody. You can even walk it if you want. And if that isn't enough, you can try the kitty dashes, but I don't know if you'll be allowed. 
<laughs> I'll still lose at those. <laughs> but seriously, I just want to highlight this for two reasons. Well, first of all, because of the great work that we do. And we have had so many generous sponsors this year. They really stepped up to the plate. And we'll be putting a thank you to them out in our recycling calendar, which we publish every year. Well, our newsletter, which goes in the recycling ca calendar every year. Um, but this gives us a chance to raise money for things that, for example, most of you know we get grant money from the state. We do not, we don't operate on tax dollars. But those funds are, are specified for just specific programs. So when we fundraise, this is our only fundraiser, we're allowed to then supplement with other good programs in the town. We support a lot of good things. We project graduation, we have senior lunches, and we do mentoring programs. So we do a lot of good things. We hope you'll join us. For what? For the race. Oh, we'll be. We'll be. We're there for your lunch. <laughs> yeah, you're there to eat. <laughs> well, and that's another thing, too. At, at our 5K race, we'll give you breakfast and we'll give you lunch. We have bagels, fruit, and Jersey Mike su supplies the subs. So what more can you get? And if you run, you get a really good shirt. But I do need volunteers. I am also asking for anybody who would like to volunteer. We need help with our as course marshals and our water stops as well. So they can contact me at the recreation office, the Municipal Alliance Extension. Any questions? You're all dying to go. Nope. Thank you very much. Ms. Scanlon, what year, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, so this, is, this is our 19th race. Okay, so, uh, so 2020 is 20. Yes. And we really would like to make our 20th in 2020 a big one next year. Okay. But I really, I should say, the other reason I do like to come here and, and, and let our residents know is because we want them to be aware in case there are any disruptions to their traveling plans. Because uh, over to my left here, Veterans Way, right? Well, that's kind of behind us, Veterans it, yes, Way. Yes, but they will not be able to access <laughs> behind land. Town Hall. Right. And in fact, recycling will not open that day until 10 o'clock. So I just want people to be aware of that, and we ask that they do not use the park unless they're there for the race. So we just would like people to be aware of, in case they encounter any disruptions to traffic, it will not be for very long. The race starts at 8.30, runners will be done by 9.30. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Evan. Before I call the next person, put the next person up, um, I guess a couple meetings back, uh, we lost a good friend here and Bill Moss and uh, the plaque and we said we we're going to put a plaque right up here in front and I was just looking down there and that plaque is, is right where we put of Mr. Kohler. Bill Moss always sat in that spot right there. And it's on the edge of the seat. It's on the, it's on the, it's on the edge and uh, he, he, was, he would attend all our meetings, he would attend all the school board meetings and was asking questions about the budgets and so forth. He was a very good town steward for us and we do miss him but I just wanted to point that out uh, I think it's a great thing that, uh, that, that, that the plaque is there for Bill and a veteran and a veteran a veteran on top correct so and an Eagles fan so he's a good guy <laughs> yeah, lost, okay Regina Regina descends a sunset drive sunrise beach that was one of the items I noticed that I wanted to say thank you for because I just thought it would be a nice memory because he was here for so many years so many nights and a lot of nights we were the only two people here <laughs> true <laughs> um, the next school board meeting is on Monday August 19th at 7 p.m. in the high school lecture hall please come there is also another vacancy now on the board a recent Lacey patch article stated that mr. de Blas had stepped down a few weeks ago a new person must be appointed any Lacey registered voter may send in a letter of interest and resume if they wish to be considered for the open board seat. And a board retreat is supposed to be held on Wednesday, August 21st from 3 to 7 p.m. in the high school library. The public is invited to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Yes, sir. Barry Bender, Historic Bay Avenue, um, in regard to Resolution 2019-223, which you spoke about, Mayor. 
just want to point out uh, the hypocrisy of both the county and this board, this, this township committee, in passing that through when I personally know that there are many elected officials within Ocean County, and I can name some names if you'd like, uh, who rent and hire people who are here without the proper documentation. So for the county and you here to push that, I think, is a, an extremely hypocritical move. And uh, just voicing my opinion on that, and I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the public? Seeing none, motion to close the floor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we have a resolution to go into executive session. Resolution, yeah, resolution. It's resolution 244, it's a resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing convening executive session to discuss matters of personnel, matters of real estate, anticipated pending uh, litigation. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Curtolo? Yes. Mr. Dykoff? Yes. Mayor McDonald? Yes. yes. Motion to adjourn? Move it. Second. Aye. 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 No further action after what is it? That's correct. Yeah.